Hey there, my name is Paul Halliday and we'll be looking at Promises inside ES6 today. If you've never seen a promise before or you've never used one, you can think of a promise as a function that has a callback method when it's complete. The awesome thing about promises is that they don't have to be synchronous. We can maybe call a server for some data and when that server responds, we can then do something after that. So let's start off by writing our first promise with ES6. We can make a variable named promise, so let promise is equal to a new promise. And if we look at the parameters of the promise, we can see that we have a resolve and a reject. The resolve is for resolving things that are true or correct, and the reject is for usually resolving errors. So we can add the resolve and reject parameters to our promise, and then we can create a value which I'm going to put as true. And then if that value is true, I'm going to resolve the promise with this value is true. If the value is not true, I'm going to reject the promise and say this value is not true. So to use the callback for the promise itself, we can use promise dot then. And you can see that the promise takes two parameters, both of which are optional the unfulfilled and the unrejected. So the unfulfilled means the resolve here and the unrejected is the reject. So we can have resolved and then we can log out the resolved. So resolved at this moment in time will be this value here. So this value is true. And if there's any errors, we can console.error the error. We can make this a little easier to read. So if we run this in the console, we can see that this value is true. We got this value from logging out the resolve from within our promise. That means if we put this value to false and we run it again, we get this value is not true. Because promises can run asynchronously, we could look at getting some data from a server and then when we get that data, we're going to put it back into our function. I'm going to simulate this by making a timeout. So set timeout. And then after a three second period, we can either resolve or reject the promise. So if we run this again, we can see this value is not true after the three second timeout. To prove that this works once again for the true value, we can see after running it for three seconds, it now resolves as true. If you've ever used Angular 1 and the $Q library, you'll find that this is quite similar to what you already did back then. You might have had a $Q.resolve, a $Q.reject, and so on. I hope this video helps in understanding promises in ES6, and if it does, hit that subscribe button because there's more videos on the way. And until next time, my name is Paul Halliday.